place, a smile on every face. Children at play, time with family today. Someone fill my plate, homemade bread I can't wait. I can't get enough, I will always stay in touch with my Bahamaland, yeah. Rev Voice introduces Bahamaland, an unlimited nationwide calling plan for only $5 a month. So call home today and connect again with Bahamaland. Home never felt so close. New details about a shootout that left one man dead. Debate continues over whether the back taxes of public figures should be public knowledge. Four Bahamians and one Jamaican face drug charges. The latest on migrants at the Carmichael Road Detention Center. And now that the official Junkanoo results are in, we'll tell you what's next for Junkanooers. We have those stories and more coming up tonight. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Christina McNeil, and your MB12 starts right now. Joining us, new details emerging about that gun battle that erupted between two men early Monday morning. One of those men would later die that night. But it turns out that the men who were allegedly feuding for months also had police records and were on bail for serious offenses. Jasmine Monmi has the details in this report. According to records obtained by our news team, both men were known by police and had been brought in for questioning for a number of serious offenses. Police believe bad blood brewing between the two men boiled over Tuesday morning, but this time it ended with one of the men dead. According to initial police reports, the two men were shot in a yard off Panza Court. Police said the victims were in a yard around 9.30 that morning when the shooting began. This handgun and shotgun were both found at the scene. Police reported that one of the victims, who was identified as Troy Bodie, died in hospital on Tuesday night. Today, Assistant Commissioner of Police Anthony Ferguson confirmed to our news team that the men were known to police. Bodie was on bail for possession of a firearm and assault with a deadly weapon. The alleged surviving shooter, who was also injured in the shootout, was also on bail. Court records revealed Bodie had filed an assault complaint against his alleged shooter, who was also charged with a 2010 murder 10 months before he was shot and killed this week. That assault allegedly took place on April 28, 2013. The 2010 murder charged against the alleged surviving shooter was later dropped. Tuesday's shooting followed two murders on Sunday and another the night before. At the scene on Tuesday, Superintendent Stephen Dean said police intelligence indicates that retaliation is the motive behind the most recent incidents. According to the 2013 police crime statistics, retaliation was the main motive for murders that year. Police reported retaliation was behind 39 cases out of the 119 murders. Police say they will continue to step up their efforts to clamp down on crime by increasing visibility. Meantime, investigators at CDU say their investigations into Bodie's murder is still ongoing. Now it's unclear when charges will be filed in this particular matter. Reporting from the Central Detective Unit headquarters, I'm Jasmine Bonamy for NB12 News. Well, there's been a firestorm of interest over whether public figures are up to date in their taxes, and if not, whether their names and arrears should be public knowledge. Minister of State for Finance Michael Halkidis says there are some who would support the public reporting of such information, but he says it should ultimately be up to the individual. So if an individual wants to say, okay, here's my status, I'm, I'm up and fully paid, I think that should be up to him, notwithstanding, um, you know, their, their public figure, there still remains some level of, of privacy. This comes in the wake of the press surrounding value-added tax messenger Ishmael Lightborn, who owes tens of thousands of dollars in unpaid taxes. Minister of Labor and National Insurance Shane Gibson earlier this week 
threatened to expose current and former free national movement politicians who have dodged their real property taxes over the years. This as FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis called for the prime minister to make the real property tax status of all parliamentarians public. Halkidis, however, says that brings up the issue of what is and is not public knowledge. I mean, if people can call for it, um, I don't, you know, there, there is an argument that, okay, if you're a public figure, then those things should be public. There's also an argument that people still have their, their private affairs. Um, I think the public has a right to expect that, for example, if I'm out there encouraging people to, to pay, then I would have made steps to pay myself. But I'm not sure you want to go towards a, a um, reporting where the individual objects. Halkidis was unable to say if there has been an increase in the number of people seeking to bring their taxes up to date since the controversy sparked. He says the Ministry of Finance has an ongoing campaign encouraging people to pay up. Beginning from last year with the amnesty, we've had an ongoing program of encouraging people to come in to pay. We had the amnesty, uh, which saw um, many people come in. Um, we ha are reorganizing the department so that we can have a section that deals with following up. In the past, we would send the bills and wait for people to come. Now we're actually following up and encouraging people to do payment plans where if they can't come up with the whole amount, they can pay, and pay an amount and pay some over time. Halkita says all of his taxes are paid up. Another delay in the tabling of VAT legislation in the House of Assembly. State Finance Minister Halkidis telling our news team that the tariff schedule is virtually complete, but the VAT legislation is still being tweaked following meetings with stakeholders in the private sector. But Halkidis says he isn't concerned about the delay. I think it's virtually complete. Um, I think you would probably see it around the time that we uh, bring the legislation, which again, we expect to have that shortly. We're just working out some final adjustments to present the cabinet to get their approval. Uh, adjustment that came about because of our interaction with the um, various industry groups. And so um, I am advised that, you know, that sh schedule is the changes that are being proposed is virtually complete. So that will be coming soon. The good thing is that the legislation has been in the public domain since late last year. It's been distributed amongst industry groups and then it was put up on the Ministry of Finance website in um, November, towards the end of November. And so any changes that we are proposing will be, we think they will be minimal. It wouldn't change the general thrust of the, of the legislation. And so the process now would be to get final approval on the legislation in order. He adds that he doesn't think the delay will affect businesses, which in some cases must upgrade their point of sale systems or staff complement in order to be VAT compliant. We don't think that they, you know, we, from our, from our vantage point, we don't think, you know, contrary to, you know, some of the um, concerns that are being expressed, we don't think that businesses would have to go out and, and hire a, a, you know, a big number of individuals to do this, all right? Um, in terms of, of uh, machinery, during this mid-year budget, process we are making point of sale systems duty free so and just in case individuals or businesses need to buy new point of sale system which is cash registers basically or fancy cash registers um, we're making that duty free to make it more cost effective meanwhile the ministry of finance's value added tax committee continues to spread its message throughout the family islands so far the team has visited grand bahama abaco south eleuthera and what it has found is that people are hungry for information but he says the committee has also identified two main concerns. The effect on the cost of living, particularly amongst um, lower income earners, and the business people are concerned, particularly small business people are concerned about the impact on them in terms of an additional expenses for, you know, VAT reporting, keeping records, etc. Government officials say VAT is still on schedule for a July 1st implementation date. Well, four Bahamians and one Jamaican appeared in the magistrate's court this morning on drug charges in relation to a bust at the Seabreeze Canal on Monday. 52-year-old Leland Aubrey Curling of Minton Meadows, seen in the gray jacket. 51-year-old Peter Alexander Taylor of Mangrove Key Andros in the brown plaid jacket. 45-year-old William Alexander Curling of Seabreeze Estates in the yellow shirt. 46-year-old Andrew Augustine Adderley of Clarence Town, Long Island with dreadlocks. 
and 25-year-old Onique Ferdinand James of Iron Shore, Jamaica, in the blue plaid shirt, appeared before Deputy Chief Magistrate Andrew Forbes. The group was charged with one count of possession of dangerous drugs with intent to supply, one count of conspiracy to possess dangerous drugs, one count of importation of dangerous drugs, and one count of conspiracy to import dangerous drugs. Police say the men were found in possession of Indian hemp with the intent to supply on Monday, February 24th. It is also alleged the men imported the Indian hemp between Thursday, February 20th and Monday, February 24th. Leland Curling, Peter Taylor and William Curling were represented by attorney Jomo Campbell. Andrew Adderley was represented by attorney Michael Camp, while Onique James had no attorney. Leon Curling, William Curling, Adderley and James pleaded not guilty to all of the charges, while Taylor pleaded guilty to each one. Police prosecutor Ursel Dorsett told the court he needed more time to look over the facts concerning the charges, and all of the defendants were remanded to Her Majesty's prison until their next court appearance on Wednesday, March 5th. On that day, Taylor is expected to receive a sentence, and prosecution will determine whether to proceed with the charges against the other men. Dorset told the court he's sure prosecution will proceed with all charges. Coming up, why stenographers are being removed from the magistrate's courts to the Supreme Court. But the primary focus is to try and get the serious criminal matter dealt with first as a priority. But first, an update on the detention center's population. Find out more when MB12 returns.